Welcome to Bulk Reef Supply. This is a demonstration of how to install your chloramine five stage reverse osmosis deionization system. In this video we'll show how to install the unit on your kitchen sink, laundry tub, as well as permanent connections underneath the sink. We will also discuss when to change your filters as well as how to use the items included on the plus unit. For use on a laundry tub you would typically attach the unit using anchors or directly into studs making sure that it's securely on the wall because the unit is quite heavy once full of water. You may also bring the unit out as needed and simply set it on the counter. Setting the unit up near a laundry tub or a kitchen sink is the easiest method. It's basically just two canisters and three sets of hose. First hose you're going to use is the waistline. You're just going to simply slide this down the drain. The next hose you're going to connect will be the red hose which is the water supply line. We're going to attach this to the faucet using a faucet diverter valve. Locate the aerator and unscrew it. We're going to replace it with a faucet diverter valve, which is an aerator that also has a small port on the side, which you can divert the water out. Once it's installed, take the red water supply line and slide it onto the barb fitting on the side of the faucet diverter valve. These valves come in several styles. This one has a black knob on the side. You can simply turn the knob to divert water out the red line on the side and then when you're done you can turn the knob again to make sure water is coming out of the faucet. The next line is the blue line which is your reverse osmosis purified water. We're going to slide that into the deionization canister which will further purify the water into ultra pure water suitable for aquarium use. You can now connect the line to a tub or float valve to collect your water. In this section we're going to show how to install an RO system underneath the sink with permanent connections to both the water supply as well as the drain. This install takes a few minutes longer but is worth the extra effort if you have the space. Before making a permanent install like this it's extremely important to turn off the water supply. You can often do this using the knob located on the water supply line underneath your sink. However if you can't shut it off there you'll need to locate the main water supply to your home. After shutting off the main valve, you'll need to open up the faucet at the lowest point in your home, which will let all the water drain out of your pipes. First step is to hook up the wastewater line permanently to your drain. We're going to use this drain saddle valve and attach it right onto the drain. We need to drill a small hole in the drain for the saddle valve. We'll use a power drill with a quarter inch bit and drill the hole a few inches above the trap. You can see the small hole we drilled right here. This is where we're going to put the saddle valve. Now we just clamp on the saddle valve. I like to use a smaller drill bit to align the holes before I tighten it down. Last step of installing a permanent drain connection is locating the black wastewater line and pushing it into the push connect fitting on the saddle valve. Next we're going to make a permanent connection to feed your RO system. Flexible tubing like this has become one of the more common tube attachments for water supplies. We're going to use an easy faucet connector by Murloc to attach your RO system to the flexible tubing. This is the easiest way to install a permanent water supply connection to your RO system. We include this with all of our non-economy units and I believe we're the only company in the reefing community to include this piece for free. First step is to remove the hose line so it's not attached to your water supply any longer. Then locate the thick clear washer and insert it into the top of your adapter. Now all you need to do is attach the adapter to the water supply valve and hose. Locate the red water supply line and insert it into the side of the adapter. It should look like this when you're finished. Instead of the flexible tubes, your sink may have rigid copper lines. Due to placement, some customers choose to attach it directly to their home's copper piping. To attach directly to copper pipe, we're going to use a self-piercing saddle valve like this one. Locate the seat of the saddle valve, which has two different sizes. Figure out which size is right for you and place it on the pipe. Then slide the rest of the C-clamp on. The unit should now look like this and you should use a wrench to crank down on the nut on the bottom to hold it securely in place. The last step is to attach our red water supply line to the saddle valve. The unit comes with three small parts. The small brass part we're not going to use because that's for rigid copper line. Go ahead and unscrew the brass nut and then slide it onto the hose. We'll then take the plastic ring and slide it on as well. Make sure the thin side of the bevel is closest to the end of the tube insert the brass insert and screw onto the saddle valve. You've now made a permanent attachment to your home's water supply. Now that it's properly installed 
We'll twist a knob which will drive the pin down into the pipe and make your hole. When you have it all the way to the bottom, we're going to reverse the pin back out so water can flow through the hole. Please note that you have created a permanent hole in your copper pipe and don't install the saddle valve unless you are comfortable with this. The last step of setting up your system is locating the blue product water line and we're going to plug that into the deionization canister. Now locate the blue product water line coming out of the deionization can. This is your new purified water. You can now insert the line into a container of your choice, a float valve, or a pressurized tank. If you purchase the five stage plus system, it's going to come with three additional accessories. The first of which is a dual TDS meter. This is going to measure the TDS coming out of the RO membrane as well as the TDS coming out of the DI resin and will ultimately tell you the quality of the water that you are using. The water coming out of the DI resin should always be zero. If it isn't, your DI resin is probably depleted and needs to be changed. The system also comes with a pressure gauge, which does two things. First, the pressure will drop when the filters get clogged, so it will help you know when to change out your filters. It will also help you troubleshoot your system if you ever have problems, since most of them are related to water pressure. The plus unit also comes with a flush kit to bypass the flow restrictor on your membrane. This allows you to flush off deposits off the membrane surface and prolong its life. We recommend opening the valve for a minute or two before and after using the unit. In normal operation, it should be closed. Note that the way that the valve is positioned now is open. Because chloramines and ammonia are so dangerous to the aquarium, it's absolutely critical that we maintain the filters properly. The first filter is a sediment filter which will take out most of the large particles. This should be changed when you notice that it's brown and dirty or when you notice that there's a drop from pressure indicating that it's clogged. The next two filters are the catalytic carbon and the chlor plus carbon block. When used in conjunction like this, we recommend changing them both out every 4,000 gallons. Keep in mind this is both wastewater and product water combined. So if you're operating at a typical 3 to 1 ratio, this would mean that you would do a filter change after producing 1,000 gallons of product water. In normal operating conditions, as long as the pre-filters have maintained properly, the membrane, which is in the white canister on the top, should last around three years. The last stage is your DI resin, and is going to last drastically different times from person to person. It is highly dependent on the quality of your water to begin with. The resin will change from dark blue to golden brown as it is exhausted. Once the canister is completely brown, it is an indication that the resin has been exhausted and should be changed. We include the carbon rinse valve on these systems because the middle stage is filled with granulated carbon, which can be very dusty. We don't want the dust to be caught up in this system, so we're going to rinse it out using this valve. This is a three-way valve that will divert water into the next carbon block, or you can switch it and send the water over to the wastewater line. When using brand new filters, we need to make sure the dusty fines from the catalytic carbon go down the wastewater line. We suggest flushing these fines down the drain for around 10 minutes. This will help ensure that most of the dusty fines have been thoroughly rinsed out of the carbon. Once it has been thoroughly rinsed, we can return the three-way ball valve back to its original position and divert water into the next carbon block for normal use. On a chloramine system, it is then wise to let a few more gallons run through the system and then let it sit overnight before your first use. Allowing the carbon to rest overnight like this ensures that it's thoroughly wet and produces a proper reaction with the chloramine. If you should have any other questions about your install, please don't hesitate to contact us.